Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. I can't believe it. Can't believe what, David? You've been quiet for five whole minutes. Well, you asked me to be quiet, didn't you? Mm -hmm. But since when is there such a wide, obedient streak in you? Since I love you, darling. Besides, it's very sweet to watch you working over your drawing board. Mm -hmm. What's sweet about it? You know, you look just like an architect. That's peculiar, because I am an architect. That's what's so sweet. Oh, go back to your knitting. (laughs) I'm not knitting, I'm sewing buttons on your shirts. Thirty-two. Say, David, um, hmm? darling, you interrupted the first silence, so you you won't get angry with me if I interrupt the second one, will you? Mm, I might, but speak up. Now, don't try browbeating me. David, I merely want to inquire how long you want to be left alone to pore over your work. Thirty-two. Till dinner. Till dinner? It's hours till dinner. Till dinner. Do you begrudge me a few hours? Frankly, yes, I do. They are yours for the asking. Thank you so much. And I'm going to see that you are not interrupted. It's the dawn of a new day. After all, I understand that you didn't stay at home to talk to me. No, no offense, ma'am. Of course not, of course not. You're so understanding today. I am always understanding when you give me a chance. Thirty-two. Now, David, you, you, you stop talking. Get back to your work. I will. And, darling, if my being in the same room bothers you, I will be very happy to retire to me closet. You know, that's Shakespearean for room. Uh, thank you for translating it. No, yeah, you can I... stay here now that you're here. Claudia, I want to ask you about... Shh. What's the matter? David's working. Oh, is that all? Did I hear you say, is that all, Mother? Well, I, what I meant was you're always working. It's nothing unusual. Oh, you have to do better than that, Mother. Now, you get back to your drawing board, David. Uh, what was it you wanted, Mama? I wanted to ask you if you'd like me to prepare the baby's food. Bertha said she'd do it. Bertha's ironing. Oh. I think I'll do it myself. Would you like me to do it, Mama? For the love of Mike, will you two women stop whispering? Speak up. You're whispering so as not to disturb well, you. Well, that disturbs me twice as much. I'm breaking my neck trying to hear what you're saying. It wasn't anything very interesting. Besides, if you weren't so nosy, you... you We'd better you... go out to the hall, Claudia. Oh, all right, I will. I... Only I'll drop all these buttons all over the floor. Come oh, along. Gosh. The great man wants to be left alone. Oh, he, he doesn't mind my being here, Mama. He said... Oh... Well, all right, I'm coming in the hall. Well, save your strength. Say what you have to say and get it over with. All right, David. That's what you want. Mama, would you like me to prepare the food for the baby? No, thank you, Claudia. I have nothing else to do just now. I'll be happy to do it myself. That is very sweet of you, Mama. There, David, that's all we have to say. That's Mm, all. I hate to lock you out of your own living room, but it's not my fault that Fritz scraped the floors in my study and that I... Didn't warn you I'd be home early. Of course. Not your fault at all, David. And and don't you worry about us now, darling. Mama and I get along fine without talking. Don't, don't we, Mama? I'm not staying around to test myself. I'm going into the kitchen. Goodbye. Hey, Mama, come back here a second. No, good Lord, grant me patience. What is it you want, Claudia? Make it quick. We're disturbing David. Well, David wouldn't know what it's like not to be disturbed. Poor David. Well... All I wanted to say was for his benefit. Well, then say it. All right. All right. I did. I will. I mean, will you be so kind as to tell Bertha not to come in here under any circumstances just to call us when dinner's ready? I'll tell her. Anything else? And if the phone rings, Mama, could could you answer it? I'll take it in the hall. Anything else? Oh, if Fritz comes in to talk to David, David can talk to him after dinner. I shall deliver all your messages as fleet as Mercury himself. There, David, now everything's arranged so you won't be interrupted. Very, Except to eat, of course. Very sweet and very thoughtful of you. Not at all. Nothing I wouldn't do for any old husband of mine. Now, shh. Shh yourself. 32. Oh. Uh oh. That was the telephone. But don't you worry about it, David. Mama will have it. 32. I'm not worrying about it. 32. Funny. I wonder why Mama's not answering it. This is one of those days. She said she would. Claudia, my hands are full of pots and pans, and I have something boiling. I can take a hint, Mama. I'll answer. 
four times eight is thirty-two, I think. They haven't hung up. Oh, I'll die if I'm too... Oh, thank goodness it rang again. Hello? 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 What? Who? Who do you want to speak to? Mr. Kelsey? Who is it, Claudia? It's for me? Just a moment, David. I... Uh, excuse me. Did you say you want to speak to Mr. Kelsey? Well, uh, who's calling, please? Oh, Mr. Adams. Is it for me, Claudia? Just a moment, David. Uh, hello, Mr. Adams. Now, I'm afraid there's no Mr. Kelsey here. You must have the wrong number. Bye, Mr. Adams. Well, who was it? Mr. Adams. What do you want? Mr. Kelsey. What Mr. Kelsey? I don't know. Just Mr. Kelsey. Oh, that Mr. Kelsey. Yeah. Now, you go back to your work, David, and shh. We don't know any Mr. Kelsey, do we? Not that I know of. Mr. Adams had a very nice voice. What Mr. Adams? Just Mr. Adams. Oh, that Mr. Adams. Yeah. I wonder what Mr. Adams wanted. Well, I'm surprised you didn't ask him. David, just because the phone rang and interrupted you is no reason to take it out of me. What does a man have to do... Oh, well. No, I can't think of anything else to interrupt you, David, so just stop fretting. Besides, I'll be like a watchdog watching over you. What a comfortable thought. Actually, I think if you hadn't opened your mouth ten minutes ago to comment on how quiet it was, none of this would have happened. You know, it's like a chain reaction. What a big word for such a little brain. Maybe now it has unchained itself. Yeah, it stopped reacting. Thirty-two. Where was I? Did did that sound like a doorbell to you, David? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I think it was definitely the doorbell. Yes, it was. So what? David, you don't seem to understand, darling. If it is the doorbell, that's an interruption, too. Not if you'll do me a big favor. Anything. Get rid of the interruption. Get rid of it? By any method or means. Do you really, really mean? Yes, I really, really mean. Well, all right, if you say so. I just said so. Of course, if you you don't even bother to answer the door. Now, that would be rude. I'd rather be just plain inhospitable than rude. Oh. I'm coming. What are you doing locking your front door in the country, Mrs. Norton? Well, we don't usually, Mr. Tucker, but... It ain't very hospitable of you, locking your door on a neighboring friend. Well, we didn't mean to, honestly. I, I didn't even know it was locked. You're going to be locking your front door. There ain't much that's going to walk through it. Uh, somebody wants to come in, Mr. Tucker. All they have to do is ring the bell. Waste of time and energy. Somebody really wanted to come in, all the body'd have to do is to come in. I don't hold with shutting your door on life, ma'am. Taint neighborly. Mr. No, Tucker. no. You know that you're welcome any time you choose to visit with us. Then why don't you invite me in? Well, I've been I... standing out here so long on this doorstep, I'm starting to feel like a doormat. Uh... <laughs> Your husband's home, ain't he? Um... Told me yesterday he was going to be out early in Eastbrook to do some architecting on this schoolhouse. Well, yes, he's, uh, uh, he's, uh... Um... Well, what are you stuttering about? Well, you see, he, he... Either he is or he ain't here. Now, is he or ain't he? He's here, but he's... Oh, but he's he's busy, hey? Well, he's working. Well, that ain't nothing to be ashamed about. Sooner or later, we all got to work. I'll get myself home, and he can call me when he's himself again. He did ask me to keep him from being interrupted, but I, I'd love it if you'd come and talk with me, Mr. Potter. Hey, what are you apologizing for? I'm not apologizing. Stop apologizing. Anything I can't stand is a woman who's always apologizing. I... I... So... Just tell your husband that uh, that I was here and that I went and that uh, if he's done with architecting tonight, why, we'll talk then. Oh, I wish you'd stay. Nope, nope. I uh, I got some other important things to do, too. Uh, I'll, I'll be seeing you. Well, thanks for coming over. I'll tell David. <laughs> Poor old man. I certainly hate. Gee, I hope I wasn't rude. He... Well, he seemed to understand, though. Did I even say thank you, David? Hmm? Thank you for what? For doing your dirty work. Didn't you hear? Me hear? No, no. I, I, I didn't hear anything. I was I was concentrating right here. You really concentrate, don't you? I certainly do. <laughs> when I concentrate, I can hear everything that's going on. You do, huh? I guess that's the difference between men and women, probably. Claudia, who did you get rid of? Oh, didn't I tell you, Mr. Tucker? 
Mr. Tucker? Yeah. He's the one who rang the doorbell. And you turned him away? You, you told him not to come in? Well, I didn't want to. You you told me to get rid of whoever it yes, was. Yes, but not Mr. Tucker. David, you were working. He insisted on not disturbing Oh, but Mr. Tucker's different. He's our neighbor. We, we have things to talk about. Call him back. You call him back yourself. I'm not budging. How could you possibly turn away Mr. Tucker when you know... How could I turn away Mr. Tucker? If I live to be a million, I will never understand about men. Besides, I didn't turn him away. He turned himself away. Mr. Tucker. Hey, Mr. Tucker. Come on back. First you tell me one thing, then you tell me another thing. I don't know what to do. How do you misunderstood what I meant, Mr. Tucker? That is the end. Never again, as long as I live, will I try and do what he asked me. After I went to all the trouble and, and... Blaming me for his weakness. Oh, well, Man. heck, son, I don't want to be interrupting you if you've got work to do. Your wife's plum right. Work, work comes first. Uh, first. Nonsense. I'd rather talk to you, Mr. Tucker. Much rather. Well, nice you to say so, son. And we have until dinner, so fill yourself a pipe at the back and settle yourself down. Oh, I thanks. thought you really meant it when you said you wanted to work. I, uh... I was just aiming to talk to you about the clover seed I latched onto through Matthew Warren. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you about that, too. It seems to me that we need to seed one of the lower meadows. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'll tell you a story about that, son. All right. It was about 45 years ago. My father said to me, he said... Mama! Like hey, Mama, can you come out here a second, would you? Shh, Claudia, you'll disturb David. Ah, look at David for yourself, Mama. Well, looks to me as if Jared Tucker and your hard-working husband have settled down for a long afternoon of chinning. Honestly, doesn't that burn you up? No more than one should expect of a man. No, An interruption not. by a wife is one thing. By anything else, it's quite another. Well, I had dope to believe him. You were indeed. <laughs> he has a wonderful laugh, though, hasn't he, Mama? Who? Mr. Tucker? No. David. Waiting for seats at the movies isn't nearly such a bore as it used to be now that so many movie houses have Coke coolers in the lobby. You can step up, drop a nickel in, get an ice-cold Coca-Cola, and wait refreshed. And you can stop for a Coke and enjoy the pause that refreshes on the way out, too. How long do you think it'll be, Mr. King, before Claudia finds out that husbands are only men? She's finding out, I'd say, a, a little every day. It's hard to believe they're married only a little over a year. Still harder to believe it's that long already. I know what you mean. Time is a way of going fast and then going slow. Christmas again. What does it mean to you? Christmas? Why, snow and decorations and carols and Christmas presents to be unwrapped and prayers and mistletoe. Mistletoe? Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I'd quite forgotten to get the mistletoe. I was quite all right. Don't get it because... Uh, Tomorrow, Claudia and David will find it. Well, thanks for warning me. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>